Maddie Elmore, welcome to the Running Effect podcast. How are you doing this afternoon? I'm good. Thanks for having me on. I had to do a double take there and think in my head, is it afternoon in Oregon? Because I'm three hours ahead of you. I know you grew up in Oregon, but do you have any friends or family that are in different time zones where you're like texting them or calling them and they're like asleep? Um, Not really, actually. Most of my friends and family are over here. So yeah. That's nice. Yeah, I'm born here, so. Speaking of growing up in Oregon, I believe you actually went to uh, high school in Eugene itself, yeah. South Eugene High School. What was that like growing up? Were you aware how good Oregon was at running? Yeah, like I grew up going to the old Hayward all the time. Like before I even really started running, I would like go to the Olympic trials with my family and stuff. Um, my parents' house is like, we can literally, you can hear the announcers from Hayward Field like at my in my backyard. So growing up, like, yeah, it was a huge um thing and like my dad's from Illinois and when he came here it was like when pre was like super big so yeah just like I always knew from a young age the history of Oregon track I have to ask you old Hayward or new Hayward which one well if I say old Hayward I might get in trouble (laughs) but I I loved old Hayward like the vibes were just crazy and that might have just been because I'm younger but I think from like an athlete perspective the new Hayward like just the facilities and amenities we have like for the athletes is so much better. So, I mean, I think it was definitely a really big improvement. I think I saw a video the other day. It was like a throwback. It came up on my feed from Bobo of you guys doing a workout on the outer part. It was like snowing. How, how far around the track is it? And for those who don't know what I'm talking about, it's like not the track itself. It's basically where like spectators would walk in. It's all like, yeah, it's like the upper concourse. Yeah. It's actually 400 meters. Like, it's not a full loop, but I thought it was only 300 and Shalane was like, we're going to do 400s up there. And I was like, I don't think it's 400, but it was. And yeah, we did like repeat 400s. It's actually super fun because it went by so fast because you're just like kind of out of your element. But yeah, that was the only time we've done a workout up there, but it was pretty cool. So it's exactly 400 meters. Yeah. Yeah. What? That's yeah, crazy. <laughs> How does that make sense though? Because isn't it wider around? than the track itself since it's not a full loop like it's kind of like a horseshoe shape so we would like start at one end and then stop at the other and then go back yeah oh gotcha okay that makes sense a full circle yeah 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 what would you say is like to a listener who idolizes Oregon as I'm sure many of them do what's it like competing and running for the University of Oregon and all the aura that comes with it yeah I think it's crazy especially for me like being from Eugene because I think a lot of people come here like the international people and they don't really know the history behind it but I think just growing up here and like putting on that uniform and um just yeah it's really crazy like when I put that on it just like means a lot more you raced this past weekend at Brian Clay was that to open up the outdoor season or had you already raced yeah I raced at Stanford two three weeks ago or two weeks ago so that was when I did the 5k but then I opened up my 1500 at Brian Clay this weekend right. okay what was it like dropping down in distance you're more of a 5k type what did it feel like to spin the legs um yeah it was there was like a lot of girls in the field and it was we were all kind of like had the same PR so it was it was pretty hectic and it was pouring um but I was like I was pretty happy with how it felt and stuff um so I'm racing the 15 again at Oregon Relays this weekend which I'm super excited about is it weird doing that meet or like even like in cross you guys have, I think the Bill Dellen, yeah. how do you even say that? Bill Del- Dellinger. Yeah. Yeah. Dellinger invite. Like what's that process like where you're like, you probably sleep in your dorm the night. Like it's very like, it's kind of like a practice because it, everything is normal. It's like home field. Yeah. I, it is weird. Like just, yeah. Not being in a hotel and stuff. Cause that's just usually the pre-meet vibe. But I think when a meets at Hayward and then there's actually people in the stands, it, it doesn't feel like practice. So I think it's pretty fun and it's pretty cool to like field the race on our home track. Speaking on the landscape of the current NCAA system, I feel like both men's and women's it's just off the charts, how fast people are running. Yeah. What's it like to be a part of it? And even someone like Parker Valby where, you know, her 10K, if you take that 5K time, it probably would have been, I think, a regional qualifier and yeah. done really well at the NCAA meet. What's it like being in this current NCAA landscape? Yeah, it's crazy because it's like times that I'm running. Like if you had told me that in high school, I would be like, oh my God, that's like, you know, winning NCAAs and all that stuff. But then it's like, and even Shalane, like when she sees the times, like we're running so much faster than um, like when she was in college. Um, 
and she was, you know, one of the best American distance runners ever. <laughs> um, so it's just like crazy. And I think, yeah, people like Parker are just um, raising the standard so much for everyone. And it's really cool to see, especially on the women's side. I think we've just like come so far in the sport. A lot of people speculate about like the shoes or training. What would you say is your take on why people are running so fast these days? Um, I mean, I think the shoes help a lot for training, but I don't really, especially dragonflies, like everyone's like, oh, they're super shoes. But when I put on dragonflies, I don't feel like that bouncy, honestly. So I feel like I think definitely for training, like the shoes that we have help a lot. And I think also just like the knowledge of the sport and there's just so many more, you know, people wanting to get better and just there's so much more competition now whereas years ago I feel like it was just a few people but now everyone's just kind of raising the standard so I think it's kind of like a domino effect because then when you have someone like Parker Valby then you know all the other girls all of us want to go chase that so I think it's just yeah kind of a domino effect. Let's go back in time to young Maddie take me through her start in the sport of running. Um, yeah, I actually started playing soccer and basketball growing up and I did like some meets just being from Eugene, we would have like races and stuff. Um, and I think, yeah, I would do like all comers meets at Hayward too, which was super fun. Um, and that's kind of where I started because I was like so competitive and I was like, oh, this is kind of fun. And then in middle school, I realized that I liked like in soccer, I liked when I was like chasing people (laughs) more than actually playing soccer. (laughs) So um, then I started taking it pretty seriously in middle school, and then I decided to quit um, soccer and basketball, and then I went all in um, for all of high school. What was that shift like going from like doing running to doing running and being like super serious about it and intent about like seeing how far you could go in the sport? Yeah, it was definitely really hard because like I had been playing soccer my whole life, and I was I was pretty good. Like I was on a traveling club team, so that kind of took over my whole life. And then the soccer coaches are like, you have to choose. I'm like, I'm like 12. Like, why are you telling me that I need to choose? Plus running helped my soccer so much. Um, But yeah, I think it was, it was definitely weird because I didn't really know what I was doing. Like my dad was kind of my coach and he doesn't really know anything about running. So like he would take me to the track and I would like, my warm up was like jogging 400 meters and then I would just like start my workout and then I like wouldn't cool down and I was like wearing Roshis. Do you know what those shoes are? No. I would run in those. I don't think I've ever heard of them. <laughs> they're like, they're like golf Nike. I don't know. They were like in when I was in middle school, but you should definitely not run in them. So yeah, I think. And then when I got to South, our program was like kind of a historic program in um, Eugene. So I had really good coaches there that kind of helped after that. What was that shift like coming from middle school to high school? I believe your freshman year, you did really well at the state meet. I could be wrong on that. What was that like transition like for you from going to that period where you didn't really know what you were doing, but you were like passionate about the sport to still being passionate about the sport, but having more direction and guidance? Yeah. Yeah. I got third at state um, my freshman year in the 15 and that was good. But yeah, my eighth grade year, I like... I ran 430 in the 1500. So I thought that I was like, insanely fast. Like I was like, Oh my God, I'm gonna run like 410 in high school. And then I kind of just like went through that transition where yeah, I had more guidance, but um, which I was probably doing like the right training. Um, But I wasn't running as fast as when I was in eighth grade. So I think that was kind of hard because I was like, I didn't really understand like you don't PR every time you step on a track. Um, so I think that took a while for me to learn. And that's, um, so now when I see like younger girls or even like freshmen on my team, like, oh my God, what's happening to me? I'm like, no, you're fine. Like you're not supposed to PR every race. Like at some point you get so fast that it's really hard to match your PRs. So yeah, I think that was, it was definitely a hard transition to high school, but I think towards the end, I definitely got the hang of that. Was there a point in high school or maybe a particular race that you ran very well and you thought, oh, maybe I can pursue this in college and beyond? Yeah, um, my junior year, I won state in the 1500 and I'd been like pretty banged up and injured before that. And um, Helen, the Oregon coach, had been like interested in me and talking to me a lot. And then I think after that race, it was like she was like, "Okay, like, yeah, you you can definitely come here. And I think that was like one of my big goals in high school. And I was glad that happened because my senior year got canceled because of COVID. So I was like, okay, I got my state championship. Like that was one of my main goals um, all of high school. So yeah, that was definitely the most pivotal race. 
Did you ever consider not going to Oregon or has Oregon always been like the landmark dream school? Yeah, it was hard because I did want to leave my hometown. But like on my visit at Oregon, it was when Hayward was being built and we like got to like go tour it with like hard helmets on and stuff and just like seeing it. And it was like kind of like, why would I leave when um, this is here? And I just like, yeah, I had built up like a really good relationship with Helen um, just being from the area and stuff. But actually, I almost went to UCLA, which seems super random, but I like had always wanted to go there um, just for like school and stuff. But then I realized I was like, I want to take running really seriously. And yeah, now I'm very glad that I chose Oregon. So yeah. You were trying to follow Mio Barnett, just like. Yeah, I know. I'm like, I would have had like four different coaches <laughs> if I had gone there. <laughs> Speaking of UCLA and Mia and Dahlia and who am I missing? Yeah. Sam. Uh, what was it like when you found out they were transferring? Oh, I was so excited. Yeah, this um, summer they were like coming on all their visits and I was here since I live here. Um, so I was super excited to have them all. And it, it happened so fast because like I'd been racing Mia a bunch in the 15 um, outdoors and kind of got to know her a little bit then. So then when I heard she was coming on a visit, I was like, Shalane, we need to get her. <laughs> like, um, and then it was awesome that Sam and Dahlia came too. Yeah. As you look back on those high school years, what are some of your fondest memories in the sport as a high schooler? Um, I think South, we have this thing where in August, before everyone like comes back to school, we go on like a team camp trip. And um, my coach would probably be like, really, Maddie, this was one of your good memories because I am not the I don't really like camping that much and we would like be out there for a week. Um, but it was super fun, like a great experience. Like you're out there without your phone, you're literally in a tent. Like there were some nights where it was like raining. Um, but I think that's where I like built super close bonds with people on my team. And um, we would do this thing called big day and we would like hike 10 miles up this mountain and then run 10 down. And it was just like, yeah, that was a really good experience. Um, and then also just being on the team with a bunch of pretty good girls was really fun. Not that you're not having fun as a collegiate athlete now, but I think in high school, there's so much less pressure to perform and you inevitably are going to have a few teammates who screw around every practice and make things yeah. fun and funny. Do you miss any of the aspects of like the pure nature of high school? Yeah, a little bit because I think high school track and cross country is really different than any sport because there's so many like people and anyone can really do it. Like I remember we would like, and it's also weird now because I'm training on the same like trails that I ran on in high school. So I have like so many memories from, and I just remember like sometimes we'd be running and then my teammates would like go like climbing trees and stuff, or we'd like jump in the river. And I'm like, now if we did that, like what? Like if someone saw us just jumping in the river off a breeze trail, <laughs> they're like, yeah. So I think it's, it's really cool being from here and like just being able to run and having like so many different memories from different times in my life. For sure. As we talked about, you go on to run for the University of Oregon. If I'm not mistaken, you redshirt that freshman year. Take me through that year. Um, yeah, my freshman year was really hard for a lot of reasons. That was like the major COVID lockdown year. Like when we didn't have cross country, that was when cross country was like in the winter. Um, and yeah, I got injured basically right away. And it was kind of just all of the freshmen were injured and we were all kind of going through it. I got COVID. Um, before like the vaccines and stuff. So I got that pretty bad. And I think, yeah, that year was pretty tough for a lot of us. Um, there were six freshmen and I'm the only one left on the team <laughs> that year, I think kind of just took everyone out. So um, I think it was really nice being from here because I had my family so close. Um, so I think that helped a lot. What was that next year like? And how did you kind of bounce back from that original setback coming into college um yeah then my next year my sophomore year was also really tough I like started running again and it was going pretty well um and then I got another injury that kind of took me out for the whole year again and that was like you know two years of that that's when I started considering like maybe um I was starting to think about like what else I could be doing because my parents were like like it didn't seem like things were going to get that much better. And um, the team vibes were definitely not very good. And then that summer kind of when the coaching change happened, I started running again. And then 
everything. Like I was literally at the point where I was going to walk away from the sport and then Shlaine came and I was like, okay, I, I need to try. Um, so yeah. Is it crazy as you state that reflecting back on that period and thinking yeah. if you had thrown in the towel, how much you've accomplished yeah. recently? Yeah, it is crazy because I, yeah, like thinking of even two years ago, like where, what was going on? I, yeah, I think like I had so much support from the training staff. Like there were so many setbacks where they could have just been like, what is wrong with you? Um, but they, and I think towards that end of that two year mark, it was kind of like, we were all kind of like, okay, like what are we doing here? And that's kind of when that was also mentally happening for me but then Shalane coming and then me being able to run literally right when she came um and within the first month that she got here things started really turning around for me so then ever since then it's just been kind of a spiral um upwards yeah what would be a piece of advice to someone listening who's going through a tough dark time wants to give in wants to throw in the towel what would you say to them um I think that like I've had to say this to like a few people that I know that have been going through it. I think like almost the most important time to like not give up is right when you feel like you can't do it anymore because that's what happened to me. It was like, I was finally at my breaking point and it was just like, just one more push um, forward. And just like, I just believed in myself so much and I knew that the time was going to go by anyways. So like, the last two years have gone by anyways. And I am in such a different place. Like my life is completely different than I, if I had walked away from the sport and I'm so glad that I didn't. So I think, yeah, like, I think it's really a pivotal moment when you're trying to make that decision. And if you just push a little bit harder, things can really change. When was the first time you heard the name Shalane Flanagan growing up? Um, I don't remember. Probably. I was probably really young. Um, and I remember getting and just, yeah, like I've always had her cookbooks. And so when she was announced that she was our coach, it was kind of like, I was like, this is not real. <laughs> was it a difficult, maybe difficult for lack of a better word, transition from like someone you idolized to someone who was your coach and you were contacting every single day and conversing with and having like a way different relationship than you were used to? Yeah, I think it's really funny now to look back on like my relationship with her now versus when I first met her because yeah, when I first met her, I was kind of like, oh my God, it's Shalane Flanagan. Like Shalane Flanagan's texting me. Like this is crazy. Um, and now it's like, sometimes I am like, oh my God, you're Shalane Flanagan because now it feels so normal to talk to her um, and just have her be my coach. And then like when we're on trips, people will be like, oh my God, Shalane Flanagan's your coach. And I'm like, yeah, like, <laughs> And, but, um, so yeah, it's, it's crazy to have that, like, she's such an idol in the sport and to me growing up. And then also that she's my coach. Um, so it's been really amazing to have her. Over the few years of having her as your coach, what are some of the biggest lessons you've learned from her? Gosh, I've learned, i I feel like I learn something from her every day, but I think the biggest thing that I've learned from her is just like kind of the way like she's accomplished so much and she's like so busy and just seeing the way that she lives her life is crazy. Like she is just very um, like not chill, but she's just like, she doesn't make things bigger than they are kind of like, she'll be like, Oh yeah, I got silver in the Olympics, but it's like, that's not a big deal to her almost. Like, I feel like she, yeah, she's just like so within herself all the time. Um, and she just does so many things and I think she really like makes the most of her life and that's been like super inspiring to me. Um, yeah. And she's also like such a big competitor that's really like helped me bring that out. Um, and yeah, it's, I, I definitely learn something from her every day and like, I just, yeah, I feel really lucky to be surrounded by someone of that caliber and to like have her as my mentor. As with every single NCAA program, you know, they're the ups and downs inevitably. I feel like Oregon has had a bunch of those over the past few years within their programs. Yeah. I feel like you're a part of a time in history where they're like on a big upswing and people are crushing records. A lot of that is you. What's it like to be a part of a team that's on the up and up and specifically as someone who kind of experienced both sides of it, you know, coming in a little bit of a downslope. And then recently you guys are definitely starting to make some noise. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Cause I think 
coming in my first year or two at Oregon, it was kind of sad because like not just me going through it, but the women's distance team was not really like how it was when I was growing up watching them. So it was kind of sad because I was like, I've dreamed of going to Oregon my whole life and now I'm here and we're not really on the trajectory that like when I watched like them win the triple crown and stuff like that. So I think it's been really cool because I feel like I'm getting that experience at Oregon that I'd always dreamed of. And it's really cool to like be part of that momentum. Um, And I feel like, yeah, it's, I'm just really happy that I'm one of the people that is helping that happen because being from here, like I feel like we just like have a responsibility to kind of get Oregon to the history that we've had before. So, yeah. From you chronicling that point where you almost threw in the towel to what you've done recently and all the fast times you've run, what would you say are some of the biggest contributing factors to the turnaround and your recent success? Um, I would say just like the compound of like consistency because like even when I was super injured, it was like I kind of just got in a habit. Like I would just wake up, I cross train, I was just like every day I kind of just got into that habit. And so then when I started running again, I was pretty fit and everyone was like, what you haven't ran for so long. But like I was working really, really hard when I was injured. So I think just, yeah, that compound effect, like, I think actually I saw you like posted that thing yesterday of Jakob. That's like, everyone sees that overnight success. And I kind of, it was a little frustrating actually when I started running in, cause everyone was like, Oh my God, like, how did you do this? And I'm like, you do not understand how like hard it was for me to get here. Like how many days and like, just, it was a lot of time alone too. It was like pretty lonely because I, everyone else was working out and I'm just, you know, cross training and grinding by myself. But I think it was just that consistency over time. And then last year, just getting back into running again and um, compounding, stacking those weeks is kind of where the payoff is now coming from. How much of your success and even like your friend's success, teammate success, or just people you uh, admire see in general, do you think comes from the aspects that like the public will never see? Like even like outside of practice, like the sleep, nutrition, like foam rolling before bed, whatever yeah. it might be, like those little things that friends who aren't runners will yeah. never understand because it's not shown, but plays yeah. a massive role. Yeah. I mean, I think that's almost the biggest part of it. And yeah, people don't really understand that at all. Like, and especially like the mental battles that you have. Um, and also just like navigating like little injuries just along the way. Like some days you have to make the smart decision, which is really hard if you, cause like whenever anyone's like, Oh, you can run. I'm like, I want to run, but sometimes, you know, being smarter and yeah, I feel like the stuff outside of practice or outside of what people see is really the biggest thing that, um, yeah, that non runners really don't understand at all or can appreciate. What would you say to someone listening who wants to take their running to the next level? They've seen your progression. What would be some words of wisdom for like a high school girl listening? Who's like, I want to win a state championship in two years, but I'm, you know, maybe the second best runner on my team and not that great. How do I do it? Yeah. I mean, I would definitely say consistency is the biggest thing. And just like, I think a lot of people, yeah, they want that overnight success, but in running it, especially like that's really difficult, but like, over time, you can get so much better. Like, I feel like a completely different runner than I was a year ago. And that seems not not that long ago. So I think, yeah, just focusing on consistency over time, and then also really not comparing yourself to other people. I think that's like a huge problem now, especially with like, Strava with Instagram and everything like, and everyone running so fast, I think it can get um, into people's heads. But I think if you're just very within yourself and focus on each day getting a little bit better, you can really like compound that and look back in a year and be like, Oh my gosh, like I've come so far. Lose my train of thought again. What was I going to say? Oh, okay. I was going to cover the indoor season. Um, it's like that time of day where I'm like, yeah. and off. <laughs> also today was like, unusually Ohio has been really sunny recently and I was in the sun a good amount. Yeah. I forgot how much you get tired being in the sun. Yeah. Like it like drains I know. you. It zaps you. Yeah. yeah, totally. Anyways, <laughs> Maddie, I'd love to go through this past indoor season. I feel like that's when I started to hear your name more, recognize you more. You started to make some noise in the running world. Take me through that indoor season for you. Yeah. I mean, it started out really, really good in Boston because I ran out of that first December meet and that's when I ran 850 and broke the school record. So I was like, 
um, super happy with that because I had come off kind of a disappointing NCAA cross meet. Um, and then I feel like after that meet, I, yeah, like I ran fast in the mile, but it was nothing like overwhelming because everyone was running like sub 430. Um, and then, yeah, I feel like I was kind of disappointed with the indoor season a little bit because then I got to nationals, um, and I got eighth, which I wanted to do a lot better. And I just felt like after the race, I was kind of, um, just, I mean, it was my best place finish at an NCAA, NCAA meet. So I couldn't be that disappointed, but I think me and Chile knew that that wasn't really where I was at, um, or a reflection of that. So it was a little bit underwhelming, but so I think going into outdoor season, I was like, I'm really focused on, you know, in June being ready to go. Um, because yeah, like breaking records is awesome. But I talked to her about this the other day. She's like, people are going to break your records, but no one is going to take away, you know, a trophy from you. So it's really about placing at those meets that matters the most. I'd love to talk about that kind of balance between like you make an NCAA meet, placing the highest finish you ever have and still walking away disappointed because you knew you could do so much more through training, through other races. What's that kind of balance between like wanting to cherish these moments that are few and far between and looking back one day, like you'll probably cherish more than you do in the moment while also yeah. having the realization that like, no, I am better than this. So I'm not, I'm not that happy yeah. and I'm not going to celebrate it too much. Yeah. I think it that's been something I've really struggled with in the past like year and a half because when I last year especially it was just like I was so happy to be running again that it was kind of like every race was like oh my god that's amazing and so I think I wasn't as like competitive as I like when I grew up like growing up and in high school like I would want to win everything like I was super competitive but last year it was kind of like yay like oh my god I'm like overperforming for what people expected um and so it's been a weird transition, I think, for me to be like, okay, yeah, this is like amazing. This is my highest finish and I should be happy with that. But then also now I feel like I'm getting to the point where like I don't want to be or I don't want to see myself as that anymore. Like, yes, I have overcome a lot to get here, but also like I think now at this point it's like, okay, I want to be one of the best girls in the NCAA. So I really like, I think, and at my Stanford meet two weeks ago, that was the first collegiate race I actually won. So I think getting that feeling of winning back was like kind of a pivotal point for me. And I talked to her about that after the race. So now I'm like, okay, like I'm hungry to like compete and um, not just walk away and be like, okay, that was like good because of all this stuff that's happened to me. So yeah, I think that has been like the biggest mental challenge that I've dealt with probably. Speaking of that Stanford season opener race, in a in a quote unquote rust buster that you could have used as an excuse if it if it didn't go well. Yeah. You you break a 39 year old school record. You run 15 15 in the 5K, winning that race. What was that race like for you specifically with the context of the past few years? Yeah, that that race was crazy because before it was like pouring kind of, and it was just me and my teammate Annika Thompson at that meet, and Shalane looked at us and was like, "Just get a regional qualifier, like." you know, kind of no pressure. But then I saw the other heats and they were running pretty fast. Well, actually the funniest thing about that me is when we got the heat sheets out, I was actually in the third heat. And like two days before the race, I was like, Shalane, what? Because my 5 PR was not good, but it shouldn't have put me in that heat anyways. <laughs> so we were like, what? And so then even the day before, I didn't know what heat I was going to be. And I was like, I don't really want to run in the third heat, but I was also like, okay, if I'm in the third heat, I'm just going to Parker Valby it. Like she, she runs alone all the time. Like it's not an excuse. Um, and then right before the race, I check in and they're like, no, you're in heat two. And heat two was going off in like 30 minutes. And I just got into the track and I was like, I can't race in heat two. Like what? And so then our, um, one of our staff members like got me into heat one and I was like, okay. So then after I finished the race, I was like, I literally won. And they tried to put me in heat three, <laughs> like put some respect on my name. <laughs> um, <laughs> I said that to Bobo and he was like, I can't put that in a video. <laughs> but um, so yeah, that race was pretty crazy. Cause I didn't really know what to expect. I'd only really ran the 5k like one time before at Brian Clay last year, which did not go well at all. So um I felt super good in the race and I think there was like one point where I 
felt so good that I literally wanted to look at Shalane and I was gonna I was literally like I'm winning this race like and I think that was probably also a pivotal moment for me because I haven't like had those thoughts in a race before since I've just been almost going through the motion so I think getting that like competitive edge back where I was like okay like I'm gonna win this race like I don't care what happens um was huge for me yeah quoting you here legendary quote I'm tempted to make it the, like the quote for the graphic but I feel like some people would take it out of context uh you said you know they tried to put me in heat three I won the whole thing like put some respect on my name do you feel like you have a chip on your shoulder in general but this season particularly um I feel like I did before and now less I don't know because I feel like before it was like yeah no one really knew who I was and then like the people who did know me were like wow like you're definitely overperforming for you know just the people who had seen how bad things were going for me I think are kind of shocked at what's happening now so I don't know but yeah I definitely think um I do think some of my PRs were like I mean my 15 uh, my 5k was like 1610 before the 1515 so I'm like I understand why people weren't expecting that much um but yeah I think I do have a little bit of a chip on my shoulder and I just um yeah like I said before like I feel like I'm on the outside looking in kind of of those like really top names in the NCAA and based on like how much Shalane believes in me and how much I believe in myself I really just want to perform at the big meets and you know, be one of those top girls in the NCAA for sure. You mentioned Parker Valby. I mentioned Parker Valby. I want to ask as someone who's in the 5k NCAA scene, just ran a super, super fast time. Is Parker Valby beatable? Uh, <laughs> after I saw her run that 10k, I don't, <laughs> she closed in 1520. That was pretty incredible. I think I, I don't know. I think she, she's just like, such a incredible like and pivotal person in the sport right now and I think like I think she can run in the 1540s for sure um so I mean 1440s um so I think she can run the 1540s too (laughs) well yeah she can jog in the 1540s (laughs) um right now I would say no I don't think she's I think she's like at a different level that we're all kind of trying to catch up to but I think that's like super fun and is just I think we'll, every other girl in the NCAA is going to run faster because of Parker Valby. So we'll see. <laughs> yeah. As someone who is a Parker fan and knows her a little bit from having her on the podcast, I agree with what you're saying, but also my rebuttal would be everyone said the same thing about Caitlin Dewey last year and she lost the 15 and mm. didn't even run the 5K. So True. I think a lot can happen in yeah. a two month span. So. I'm not saying I'd bet on someone else, but I am saying that uh, big things happen and you never know what's going to happen. And that's what makes NCAA titles, I think, so special is the fact that like they're hard. They're never given. You never know. I think, yeah, if Shalane heard me say that, she would definitely be like that. Don't count yourself out of anything. Like anything can happen, especially in an NCAA race because it's, you know, it's not paced. Like, yeah. So going into it, I'm not going to. We'll see. We'll have to make it to NCAAs first. So, <laughs> talking about the rest of your season, what are your ambitions for the rest of the 2024 outdoor season? Yeah. So I think, um, yeah, definitely getting my 1500 PR down this weekend at Oregon Relays is a big goal, and then we'll see what event I focus on. But I'm definitely leaning towards the 5K, and then, um, yeah, I want to score some big points for our team, especially since I don't feel very good about my last two NCAA showings. Um, and then with that being at home, that means a lot more for us. And then the Olympic trials are a big goal for me because yeah, growing up in Eugene, going to the Olympic trials, like I just remember like idolizing the people there. So, um, you know, getting to race there would be insane and just doing as well as I can there, um, for sure. And definitely my teammate also just ran 15, 15 in the 5k. So, um, I think we're going to try to get that record down a little more for sure. Maddie, final serious question for you to wrap up our conversation today. You've given wisdom on a few subjects, but being vague enough here, and you can take this whatever yeah. direction you want to, for those who have listened to our conversation today, what would be the final takeaway message you want to leave with them? Um, I think the biggest takeaway from my story, I think would, yeah, just to 
this sounds so cliche, but to never stop believing in yourself because there were like, there were so many times and there were so many reasons for me to walk away from the sport. But at the end of the day, like I love running so much and I just knew that I couldn't imagine my life without it. And I like didn't really know who I would be without it, that I just had this inner belief in myself when not that many other people, you know, would have thought that I could get here. So I think just really focusing on yourself and not looking at everything that's going on around you. And I think that you can be really surprised by what can happen when you just like work really hard and compound that over time. Because my, the thing that I would always tell myself is like the time's going to pass by anyway. So in two years from now, I would much rather be, you know, here where I'm at than if I had walked away from the sport. So, yeah. Maddie, final question for you to wrap up our conversation today. The question I ask every single guest on every single episode, if you had Gordon Ramsay coming over to your house for dinner, what would you choose to make for him? What would I make for him? Yeah, you're in the kitchen. You're you're cooking for Gordon. Um, What's the meal of choice? Well, my roommates know this. I eat like sweet potatoes every day. It's like my favorite food. So I'd probably make him sweet potato fries, salmon, and some nice vegetable stir fry. That's what mm. I mean. Sounds like right out of Shalane's cookbook. So <laughs> I'm sure you'd be happy. Maddie, really appreciate our conversation today. Thank you for sharing your story and all the guidance and wisdom you provided to the audience today. Looking forward to seeing you crush it. Hopefully hanging on to that record, lowering yes. it and doing really well this season. Thank you for the conversation. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for so much for having me on. It was fun.